300 Days in Modded Valheim is finally here. And do I have a story to tell you all? During the 100 days I took to bigger massive builds, that and it helped my game's latency run smoother, I built what was to become my portal hub area, filled with many portals to different locations all named with signs, I found wandering madmen who all wanted to slay me dead, from the black forest to the meadows and so forth. I also managed to finally defeat the next main boss, the mother of all bosses. Oh, did I mention that two of them spawned at the same time? Yeah, that was super fun. BT Dubs, if you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button and leave a like down below. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the modded ride. As I spent 300 days in modded Valheim, and here's what happened. Day 200 was like any other day, looking through for more recipes and crafting new armor that I thought was going to be decent. Turns out later down the road, I'd gone to getting rid of it due to the fat roll it had just like Dark Souls. I needed mobility, not tank controls. Being back nevertheless, I did do quite a few repairs. Turns out as I was fixing up some of my mods separately outside of the game back in my actual mod manager, things were very buggy. It refreshed my configuration files and the building height specifically. Stuff was broken down from it and I needed to fix that. I started with the upper deck of my wall, filling in floor pieces to iron poles and filling in missing spots on the outer parts as well. Later in the day I noticed that the portal only showed a single name and it dawned on me. I got rid of the mod called Any Portals. So a big thing that I that I did change that I took out personally was any portals and that was the mod that allowed you to teleport from one portal to any other portal without having to build back and forth portals and stuff like that. So from now on I'm actually going to have to have portals going everywhere. Because of that, I would have to build a returning portal for each one I built in their specified locations. This also meant it was time for a portal hub. So looking on the map and trying to figure out which portal was what, I did have a few labeled. Back inside, I noticed this new cape, a storm wolf cape that had a lightning mark edged into it. it looked really nice. While sorting through my chests, I came across the legendary items being green again as well. That meant they were default and I would soon need to change them back to the original color, orange. The next day I was curious on how the wolves were doing and quickly named the portal and made my way there. The idea is to finally get these guys tamed so I could bring them down into that grey spawn pit and then just have the wolves eat them alive. They seemed great though. With a few pets to each one of them, I went on my way. Setting up a few more roofs, I did notice a ghost outside my spike barricade. That was a first for me. What is that? That's a ghost? Once I killed the monster off, it was time. Time to let my two star babes free and attack the grey dwarfs for me! Making my way up the stairs, I then had each one of them following me as I broke a side of the stone wall down. Once closer to the pit, a few of them did get a little confused on the way in. Over here guys, come on. There you go, there's one. Okay, can we get another? Come on. Oh, this brute is big. There we go, we got three. Okay, can we get a fourth one? Maybe I could like push him in. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little push, okay? A little push, just a little push. No, 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 stay right there you go. Okay, we got a bunch of wolves in there. Hopefully we come back to an over uh, load of stuff. And with just a little nudge or shove in the right direction, they made it inside safely. Took the rest of the night to sleep in my cozy, oh so cozy bed. Day 202, I got up, took a deep breath, and found my way back to the gray spawn area. Before I knew it, the farm was a success and the amount of drops I could get from all the grey types was endless. Cleaning up and looting all the goodies, I went on to noticing my wolves trading hits with the greys. A few of them actually needed healing as well and I had just the rune for that, or at least I would eventually. Back at home now, I was thinking of a way to get my boat outside the wall. Okay, so we're gonna need to open up the boat dock because it's time I finally went venturing on my boat and another event started. A smell of sulfur was actually in the air, and the second I stepped outside, I was on fire. Why am I on fire? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Apparently being inside kept me safe, and I wasn't about to complain. I did happen to tear down some stone floors for the way of my boat, though the boat did get stuck, so I had to move it outside anyways for the time being. Testing out to see if it would fit, it wasn't half bad. I then added some stone floors up to the top frame, and then some for the stairs later on. On day 203, the biggest thing I needed to do was figure out all the names to my portals. I changed up my class once more, crafting up some arrows, and made my way to the grey spawned black forest. I was going to need plenty of cores for what my portal hub was to be, and grey dwarf eyes. 
fighting off skeletons in a crypt, I was actually kind of worried. Things were stronger than normal and not your everyday run-of-the-mill monster. Uh, okay, there's only two ways. Hello. Oh, you're a five-star. What the fudge? Can we not right now? Can we not? You want to fudge and go, bro? Ooh, hello. I don't need... Ah, oh, okay. Hello. <laughs> Ghosty. I guess I'll run through and let you chase me over here. Looted what I could and made my way outside, forgetting that the skeletons followed me from once I came and pinned me in the corner. Not as hot as you'd think. I've got two cores. That's all I needed for the portal. Cores. Uh, 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 hi. Uh, <laughs> that was awkward. You're just waiting. All right, let's try this again. They were doing a great job at trying to kill me though. Finally free, I ran towards my little settlement, taking the portal home and checking my chests. I had no idea I had some leftover certain cores. 32 to be exact. The new place I, I build all my portals at. I want to have- oh, whoa, I forgot I had <laughs> cores. I swear to god, I, I forgot like I- just for like a moment there, I forgot I had them. With those in hand, I gathered my stuff and headed out into the sea. Time to find me a proper area for my portals. So the next few days, I traveled far and wide looking for the right place to set up shop. In my travels though, I did come across a leviathan. Getting as close as I could, I parked the ship and jumped off. Started to mine stuff here. Something I didn't realize was using vein miner on the chitin it had, I could mine everything in two hits and then go around collecting it all. Incredible stuff. Whoa, did I just pick ever? Oh my God. Yo, I just mined everything in one hit. What the frig? Oh, wait, let's do this. Let's go really fast then if that's the case. Yep. Managing through the storm, I made my way safely to land. Next, breaking down the ship and collecting the items myself. I, a little ways into the swamps, I found the perfect place for it all, the meadows that had biomes all around. Day 208, I waited around until daybreak was here, crafting up a workbench and then a quick portal home. The portal's name was Hub, FYI, just so, I mean, you don't forget and I don't forget. Cleaned out my inventory into chests about, punching the seed totems to collect all planted foods, and realizing that I was also in need of a few Grey Dwarf Vibes. So I spent some time farming them up or what I could at the pit of wolves. Just because, I mean, like, look at this. <laughs> the farm we can get, the amount of things we can get from this farm, sorry, is immense. It is phenomenal. It is beautiful. It is wonderful. I love it. <laughs> I love it. The next two days, I spent some more time with my wolves, reaping the benefits from all the hard work it took to taming them and now farming all the loot dropped from the spawned craze. It felt so good to have all these items stacking up. With that said, I also finished up building the roof, filling in more pieces and closing it off so no rain could get in. A big thing I changed by this point were the color of the dropped rare items. My orange legendary feel was back. That and I was just taking a sit in the pit, getting as much loot as one could. I also fed my wolves some more meat so they could repopulate and grow into the big army you see before your eyes. Something I realized a little late is when you fill in the roof, the monsters can't actually spawn from the spawner because they actually do need a little bit of sunlight. So I opened up a little sunroof to let them back in. On day 211 and 212, I started breaking down more unwanted equipment, gathering the magical resources and storing any away. I also ran back to my wolves and started healing them. That's right, baby. I had the healing rune. Later on in the day, a wolf of mine actually got loose. When one of the gray brutes die, it seems to have a weird effect that pushes one of the wolves out of the pit or a wolf out of the pit. I tried my darndest here, but the thing just got stuck real good. It actually started to bounce around on the spikes and die a painful death. Seconds later, I went to check up on the wolves again and slid down to my death. It was like I was watching this in slow motion. Nothing to do but just sit and watch with a dumb smile on my face. Responding back on my bed, I figured I'd try to get my stuff again. No food or stamina, and guess what? A Grey Dwarf spawned and stole back their lunch money. Also killed me. Yeah, killed me. So much fun. I loved it. Oh, yeah. Please, again, do it. Huh. By this point, day 213 was here, and I finally gathered my stuff. Ate food almost instantly and threw on my armor. Ran back up the stairs and stored a bunch of excess stuff on me. Many chests for many, many items. Thus today was a quick day and called it a night. 2.14 was the day I finally begun the project of mine. Sacks of rocks for the portal hub I would soon have. That meant I needed a lot of stone and remember I had the one snow portal still named. Now running up the mountainside, I started farming rocks all about. Some would say too much, some might even say not enough, but me, I would say 2,000 rocks was only just the beginning. 
back at the spot for the new build, I put down a stone cutter, which would become my new best friend for the next few weeks. I started with a base, adding some stone hearths to envision my idea, and then I saw it. A big old oak tree, just asking to be punished with my axe as I chopped it down. Nothing left but a stump and two thumbs. These thumbs, mine. You can't see them, but I'm putting my thumbs up. I did need a quick way to deposit items, so I crafted two chests and made sure to catch some Zs. I started building a new stone foundation on day 215. The other idea I was thinking of didn't work and it just tanked. While building out the stone foundations, I tried keeping it as symmetrical as possible to one another. While doing the build every so often, I'd find myself back by the wolves just picking up extra stones laying about. The following day, I readjusted the length of the stone foundations. Fighting my way through a few swamp monsters along my path, the Draugr and Skeleton were easy enough, but that extra thick three-star Draugr. Apparently, my shot sent it off scared and running back into the biome. I then continued my roundabout with the stone floors. Unsure, I then took it down right after because of how big it was. While continuing around, I found a good flow, building the stone out and then destroying leftover pieces that were outside the circle, filling in a cross like piece and then taking extra stone on me and finishing up the inside of the build. I built two hearths just for the aesthetic purpose and then some stairs to go around the stone floors, still figuring out how it would all work. Day 217, I was back at the wolf pit and started building a little staircase underneath, both for me so I could reach any monsters that were stuck inside and then for easier sacrifices later on. I was back at the stone building on day 218, building out additions to each staircase to give more of a portal hub feel. For me, this would become the central hub where everything would be connected. I also managed to get some pillar-like columns going for the stone floors built, really sold the whole build and what I was aiming for. This has definitely taken me a while to actually, I mean, it's not finished mind you, it still has a, a bit of work to get done and things to add. But this is kind of like the foundations of what my portal hub is going to look like. I just hope it stays the way it is right now. But it so far is coming together really nicely. I love this. We're going to have each portal connected to like wherever we're going. The next day I was back in the snowy mountains, mining and then gathering the stone I struck. With enough stone to build another Romaine Empire, I lugged it down the mountain completely encumbered. I began more building, filling in, and connecting each of the stone walkways, actually finishing up one of the portal hub connections. Just look at it! Ooh, actually, since we have this portal here, hold on, what's this portal called again? It's called Hub... I, I completely forgot, I could literally just move this. I'll take this to... Now the idea I wanted for all of my portals was something like this, and honestly I think I really like this, it's coming along nicely. And then the portal, uh, which was the front, that's not the front, that looks like the front, and it, what, what do you mean invalid placement, ah, there we go, she fits, she fits, hold on, actually, you're gonna connect. Hey, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I like that a lot. I loved what I built here and it was just coming along so nicely. I started on a few more going around and completing them with stone floor tops. Took a trip back to my wolves and stored any loot laying about. Day 220, I met my first odd and very different monster, a living water slime. That didn't seem to like me too much. Is that a ghost or a slime? It looks like a blue slime. I don't know if that's good. Let's go see. Let's go have a look-see, shall we? Living water. That does not look good. No, 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 no. Enough of that. Using my bow and arrows, I did get rid of it rather quickly. I also picked up some new material called the Globe of Water. Not sure what that was for. All right, now this is... I mean, it's done to a certain extent. It's not fully done, but I like the way we're going with it. Gave the new build a marker and a name. By this point, I went through some old recordings, unable to remember what they were called, so this was the second best idea. Day 221, I had the necessary resources for more portals, building them around one by one as I would rename them to what my portals were called. I really liked the idea of having many portals for all my locations. It just added something more to the game. One thing I ran short on was fine wood. So back at home base now, I made my way into the meadows, looking and finding finding big oak trees I could chop down for the plethora of wood they had. Kill him! What? That didn't kill him? Come on, are you there? Uh, <laughs> All right, buddy. You just, are you trolling me? What? Why would you run into the log? Come on now. Oh, there she goes. All right. Oh my God, it's really going. Oh God. Guys, watch out. Watch out. 
Watch out, it's still going. It's still going. It's still going. Stop, please. Ah, there you go. Okay. Kind of wish you guys were all in front of that thing so you could just get smushed like a pancake, but I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> three, three, three. Hello. Okay. Bonk. It, it bonked him. Guys, did you see it? It totally bonked him. Oh my god. <laughs> it was like a cartoon. It just bonked. Oh, it's going. It's, uh, come back. I'm out of stamina, but once I get... I'm coming for you. Returning home with about 200 pieces now of fine wood, a storm started to pick up, and I needed to get back right away. Started feeding a bunch of wood to my kilns just before heading to sleep. The next day I fixed up some more portals, correcting the names to and from, and also building more portals I'd need for later on. The reason for the extra portals was because I was planning on creating a new area for my smithing of ores and a nice new area for my cookery. The last thing I did that day was craft up some signs to name each portal overhead, just an easier way for me to see where I was going. Day 224, I wanted to start organizing all my chests full of equipment back at the Greyspawn Pit. I had quite a few stored away just sitting there and doing nothing, taking inventory and traveling back to home base so I could then sacrifice them all down. It hit me. This could take a while. So on day 225, this is where I decided to just build a forge by the wolf pit so I didn't need to waste time running back and forth. I eventually started breaking all of the items down in my forge, magical resources filling my inventory while I was doing so. There was about two inventories worth and once that was done, I picked up all the magical items, taking them back to home base and storing it all away. That same day while I was out collecting wood, apparently there was this random madman running about. They look exactly like a default character and they run freely. Who is that? What the heck? Feral Madman? Hi? What are you... <laughs> what is going on with this? Do I kill him? Alright. I'm sorry. Can I... I got cooked boar meat and honey? Alright. Okay. I knew I saw someone running. I thought people were on my server. Is this... This is not open. Is, I don't... I don't think it is. I kept seeing people run around. I think there's like a new update. Every time I come back to record this, there's always a new update. It's the funniest thing. I I was scared and I about peed myself because it was the first time in 200 days I saw anyone else or anything else that looked or even resembled me. Day 226, I ran into another madman. Though this time it was in the Black Forest and it was actually a delirious wanderer. He hit really hard and I honestly wasn't sure what to think of it. That said, I did use my shield to help defend and killed the poor guy where he stood. Cleaned up a few more things inside my pit and decidedly I got rid of a bunch of chests. There really wasn't a point to having that many anymore. I made my way back to the portal hub, naming the two portals that would become my crafting ore spot and my cookery spot. All that was left to do now was to decide on a location. I did find a nice little spot through a bit of swamps sitting in the meadows. This location was perfect and a great place to start farming any souls I could. The reason for the souls is my new class actually stacked souls and then turned those souls into max HP. So it was just, it was perfect. I set a marker down and then a quick portal back. Just before night completely fell though, I started building a small staircase up with a platform of stone, a nice way to get started. Day 227 was more of the same, finishing up the staircase, building out more of the stone floors, which started to fill out nicely. That area, whoa, that's a big one. Oh, it's a five stars, guys, you five stars. I wanna see how hard he can hit me here. Look at this thing. Oh, he actually does some damage. And I killed them both. I built the furnaces and kilns I took down back at home base and then placed them down here, freeing up some lag and giving me a nice little area for any ore related things. I also managed to put up a few stake walls for extra protection. That and so it wouldn't look so odd with just stone all around. With day 228 here I finished up all the stake walls for my smelter area as I built them all around. I added two doors to keep out unwanted guests, some stone pillars around the corners, and then I added a few certling core torches to brighten up the area. Next was to add a roof, so there I was, building up with some core beams for the foundation of what it would look like, onto adding thatch roofing about, and lastly going row by row until the top where it overlapped one another. Perfection. Mm -hmm. Chef kiss. On day 229, I awoke back by my wolves, going into the pit and collecting all that there was. Sorted through my inventory back up top as I put things in the chest. 
This farm idea was the best yet and only just the beginning. I did happen to move my portal and torches back so going in and out wasn't as difficult. Making my way back to the craft ore area, I took out my hoe and started tending to the land around it, trying my best to make it somewhat flush with everything else so I could continue building sharp stakes for additional beefiness around my base. It led from the front and around, to the back, and then the other side. Spikes and all. I did craft a few chests for anything I might need to store though, but look at this place. Look at the crafting ore spot. This new little addition. It looks, it looks really good actually. I think it does. The next few days, I focused on moving my cookery to a new island, running through some fields with some boars, fighting them off as well, going into some meadows. I found it, the new location that would house my cookery. I built a new portal back and started with the house, putting down some wooden floors about, adding some plank walls and rinse repeat with the other side. I then went on to building the roof, adding a few layers, then moving the portal and workbench inside the house adding some space for the smoke to seep out of and get through, then finally finishing off with the basic outline. I went on to adding doors on both sides, some walls and planks to fill in the empty spaces, even managed to give my place some windows and this really nice lattice pattern that I had on my boat dock. Making my way to home base, I started with the deconstruction of the first cookery we had, tearing down walls, floors, and all sorts of matter. I got rid of the campfires, the cauldrons, all the cooking table and benches. With day 234, I started moving the things I took down, placing campfires and metal cooking racks to a cauldron. I had all my fermenters down and moved the prep table around. This was all in my new place, by the way. So while moving all the furniture, it, it hit me. I completely forgot to take all the bars, ores, and what have you to my new craft ore area. So that's just what I did. Picked up everything from my chest back at home base, carrying it with me and moving it all to the newly built area. Everything was now officially moved by this point, which meant I could then continue my cookery. Back at home, breaking down all the chests, taking that, and then back at my new home, digging out a hole for my new place. I love the idea of hiding storage and then being able to still build from those, those chests, the storage. It was just, it freed up so much space. It just felt better, really. Before calling it a night though, I made an easy access staircase for in and out of the chest area. Day 235, I was outside with my bees, setting up a few planks so I could have them hang, and you know what? It worked. And I love the idea, rather than them sitting on a pole, it just freshened things up. Bees are sleeping, bees are sleeping. Bees are sleeping. How many did we have again? Yeah, that's what we had, we had five. Hopefully this works. It's kind of cool, right? They're like hanging this time. I like it. <laughs> I mean, we'll see how that goes, I don't know. I ran back over to home base, picking up the seeds and the totem itself with a few more items from the chests. Getting everything moved was the name of the game here, and I was close to being done. One last trip is what it took, and between the walls and a lot of roofing, lanterns, torches, and even windows, it was all done. Finally, the first build ever was gone and moved to another location. Man, looking at this is so weird. Like what it turned into from the beginning, we only had the little piece of land. We had one little house hut here in the ground, a little cookery, which was this main thing. And then I made one here and then I extended it over here, created a dock, built this huge thing. And now I'm moving the cookery back to, a, or not back, but to a new area. On top of that, we moved our smelting stuff to a different area. My throne is still there. I'm gonna keep these lanterns just because, clean it up a bit. I'm not sure what I'm gonna put here yet, but I definitely wanna keep this as like my main building area, or well, I guess crafting area. And if we do need the ores and stuff like that, I'll just head over there and grab a bunch. I also added those trap doors back of the new cookery and managed to replant the seed totems down, filling them up with turnips and carrots to go. Something I needed to change was food. I was looking through different foods to help with my HP and stamina issue. I made some butter to see what it would give me and found nut, ella, and bone broth. Not too sure about that. But I finally made my way back to those honey sausages and let me tell ya, them be honey sausages. I don't really know where I was going with that. The next day, back at my portal hub, I started adding additional planks alongside the stone for a more pleasing tone. I also got rid of the stone hearse in the middle and waited for the day I'd find myself a new, nice bonfire to add to the mix. Two days had gone by while trying to figure out why my bone mass portal wouldn't connect. It was the smallest thing and going back in my recordings, I left a space at the end of the bone mass name. I don't know why, but I did. I did it. Okay, we got it named. It hopefully stays connected. I. It 
seemed like it was literally just called bone mass, but could be wrong. We gotta find the next boss. Uh, there is a bunch of snow up there. Although I don't know if it's gonna be right there. Figuring that out though, I renamed the portal properly this time and started working on better armor. Archery just wasn't doing it for me, and I didn't have the class anymore. I said no to the set of armor, that was it. I wanted to be able to live and not have to worry every second. I did make my way back to Bone Mass Portal, taking it through and running over to the spawn location. For better armor, I needed a new wishbone to find silver veins again. All right, we gotta get, we gotta get this going. Uh, is it seven? Here we go, here we go, okay. Oh, it's poison too, I gotta use the poison potion, that's right, hold on. Oh, oh, he does half my HP. Okay, maybe, maybe not right now. You hear the music? The music's so sick. It's just going off right now. What is happening? I've never heard music like this before. Oh, ho, 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 he got him. Give my soul back, sucker. Once done, I ran back to my cookery, storing food and odd pieces away, breaking down anything I didn't need anymore. Now that I was ready, it was time I went back to the mountains. Upon my arrival, I saw and shot at the single drake, which turned into two and then three. Can I use, oh my God. Holy crap, they just hit me for all my HP. That three stars, like, scary. Can you die for me, please? Can you just die? Okay, cool. <gasps> I got legendary! What the? What the? What was that noise that you just spewed into my ear sickles? What? It was the scariest thing for a moment, but I got the upper hand as I won the battle. Moments into the mountains while I was climbing, I came across a three star wolf. So while I was shooting and swinging at this wolf, I did massive damage to it. But here's the thing. For some reason, whenever there's uneven level, ground level, so let's say like it is the wolf was down, I was up, and I'm swinging and swinging and swinging, nothing's hitting. It's so frustrating. And that's the one thing I don't like about the hitbox and like the how that works. It's just, I, I kind of get it, but I don't. Like, it's just why, really? Though with a single chomp, the wolf did kill me because hey, hitbox just wouldn't take. Oh, oh dude, okay. Okay, they do that much damage. Okay. Got it, understood. One hit is dead. Okay, deaths. Death. Responding back at home, I quickly ran to the mountains, though this time around it would be different. No warmth from the cold, so I took damage every second. I was also naked and scared for my life. But with a little sneaky beaky, I grabbed my stuff, putting my gear on while the food was a go. I found that same wolf who took my life and took it instead. Got him. Oh, thank you. It's a crazy one, I'll tell you that. At this point, I needed a break and went back to home base. I had another chest filled with unused items and honestly thought, why? So I started breaking them all down, bit by bit into magical pieces that would be used for enchanting. Day 241, I was back in the mountains. Searching for more silver was my primary goal. Of course, once I started digging, I had a few drakes greet me with their icy blue kisses of death. I think I found it. Oh, we did. And we found you. Okay, hold on. Uh, let me just take care of you first. Okay, this guy is a lot tougher to my arrows just because it's a blue star, which gives it, I guess, aerial protection. Back to mining, once that was all cleared up, got a good 100 plus pieces of silver. All right, I got, uh, let's see, uh, 163 pieces. Looks like I mined enough. All right, I guess we're good to go back. A good chunk and I was not ready to die again, so I made my way back to the portals. Going through to my craft ore spot, I started up the kilns with some coal, smelting all the silver I could possibly smelt. The next day I went back to my portal hub and took out my hammer. Something I realized a little late was that I could already build a bonfire for my place. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's actually so cool. I like having a bonfire right there. Perfect. Went back to check up on my silver to see how it was doing and things were moving along, picking up a few pieces and growing out my souls. Anything around would do, and that's just what I did. With the silver I'd collected, I was able to craft another piece of armor for better defense. I did the same with a torso and feces for more support. I would have kept the iron mail on with the added buffs, but for the armor trade-off, it just wasn't worth it. Day 243, I was back in my cookery, cleaning up my inventory and thinking of foods I could make. While in thought, I picked up the seeds from both totems. I loved the idea of being able to just punch them and gather all the finished seeds. Next, I looked at my prep table. I slotted. Oh my god, 50 and 100. 
We need crystals and barley with honey. Once we are able to survive and get into the plains more, that's when I'll start at like a barley farm. But for now, I just, I, I can't, I can't do it. For now though, we'll focus on 55, 55. We can create a few of these. Noticing the moochies or mochis and craft a good stack for myself. Those would definitely come in handy. While outside now, I got a few more souls with some boars around my place, picking up some from a few necks within the shorelines as well. Made my way back to the cookery and decided that was it for the apples. I needed something more and honestly, turnip stews at this point would be better for that. Another day went by and I found myself in the black forest. Running through, I found a troll all by his lonesome. So what did I do? I went hammer time on his butt and made quick work with the troll. The powers of my dark knight class was honestly so different and just fun. Inside the home of the trolls though, I found another. This time a one star and that made a world of a difference. Is there another trolley boy in here? There he is, and it's a one star. Let's see if I can kill him. Or he might kill me. The big troll hit like a real truck and kept throwing some good punches. Because of my weapon too, the hits I got in slowed down the attack animation of the troll, so I couldn't time the parry just right, and he killed me. Ow, that, ow, God damn it! ow. Okay, fine, fair enough. So the one star trolls are, you know, dang, <laughs> dang, so they hurt. I gotta go to gray spawn and then run over there. It was dark. I was alone in Valheim and back in the caves. I saw the troll, he saw me. I ran and tried to roll underneath him, but my keyboard lagged and I died again. I swear to God it was lag, okay? It was, yes it was, yes, yes, no, yes it was, yes, yes. And on that note, I went to bed so I could see and get my rest and buff back. Day 245 and 246, I was back in the cave again, finally getting to my graves and picking everything up. The problem here is that I was just trying to parry when I should have just tried to kill him straight away. This time I played it smart and rolled with each time the troll tried to hit me. Worked like a charm. Killed it off. Done, 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 done. Back outside now and running about, I ran into another wanderer. Oh my god, a level 4 delirious dude. I feel like these guys could kill me easily. Oh my god. And let me just say, this dude was big for what he was. A five-star viking had me dead to rights. Good thing for me though is that I had some help along the way with another troll. Alright, let's see if I can get the, these two, these guys to fight. You guys, can, can you guys fight? The troll killed off this delirious wanderer and I then killed off the troll. Just before leaving the forest, I took care of another delirious wanderer. Seemed to be quite a few out today. That, and I found another great deer. A five-star deer, in fact. Whoa, look at this five-star deer. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Whoa, you son of a gun, you're, you're massive. Can I kill you? Oh, baby, oh, baby. I'm going after it, I'm going after it, I'm going after it. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Ugh. Wait, where'd the other one go? Up there, up there, up there. Go, 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 go. A weird thing that would happen every time I killed the deer as well, it would spawn two more deers a star lower until it hit the one star deer. Also, it's that time in the video again where I say thank you for making it this far. And if you did make it this far in the video, comment Ninja Turtles down below. Also, also, if you know of the Ninja Turtles, also comment your favorite one. The next few days, I decided it was time I went looking for the next boss. Though it would take some time and setting up for what was ahead of me made it that much more difficult. All right, so today's the day. We're going to head over to the cookery right here. Or not the cookery, sir. We're going to head over to here, the craft or place. And we're going to look for the next boss. I need to find the fourth boss and I need to kill it. It's been far too long and we, 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 it's just a big thing I need to do. I've done so much already. Let's go do it. And now standing just outside the craft or location, I built my new ship. Jumped in, setting sail north in hopes I'd be going in the right direction. Now we're really going. We're going places. I don't know where we're going. We're just we're just gonna hit up a place and look for some snowy biomes. Yagluth, or not Yagluth, sorry, the, the mother of all, okay? Passing a bit of the black forest, I came across a small piece of mountains. Made it to land, jumping from rock to rock, trying to reserve some mana just in case. I found myself a dragon egg with no one guarding it, and you better believe I yoinked it immediately. From what I could see on top of the mountain, there wasn't any moderate boss spawned to be seen. This meant I needed to go back to my ship and start moving again. Funny thing was, a madman was swimming towards me and I managed to actually kill him while sailing away. 
Alright, let's get out of here. Oh, you better not board this. <laughs> hey! What? I don't get the kill? Come on! What are you trying to do to me here? The night crept along as it turned into the next day. And that day was here. Still sailing, but I came across another Leviathan thinking I could just leave it and come back. But I knew better. And look at that. We found a friend again. <laughs> another Kraken. Alright. Hey, buddy. You know, it'd be really cool at some point if they allow you to like deep dive into waters and just like see what it looks like. If there's like a turtle like thing under there or whatever the creature may look like. I'd love to see it sometime. That'd be so cool. Moments later though, I did come to find some land. Crashing into that land so I could then beat up the boat, picking up the materials and making my way through the woods. Just over a little hill, Plains was ripe and ready, waiting for me to come on in. I gotta get through this. I mean, anything in this place I don't want to fight. That's the main thing. Okay, there's a village in front of my... Uh, let's go this way. <gasps> Whoa, is your glues over there too? Oh, no way. Surprisingly enough though, all that time I ran to and from, nothing came to say hi or even startled enough to try and chase me down and kill me. And while I was running through the plains just before I reached the end of the biome, I actually got so lucky here and found what I thought was too easy to find the Yagluth summon place. You know, the big like stone arch hands, fingers, whatever sticking out. Yeah, that thing. Whoa, it is. Yo, this is too, oh my God. Woo, 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 helmet, helmet. <laughs> okay, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. No, 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 no. Oh, the water's bad news. No way I was this lucky, but apparently Odin deemed it so. I took off through some deep dark forest, picking up some souls along the way. There was a little more of the plains, but I made my way through it pretty quickly, and thankfully there it was. The big old mountain of a place. That, and I actually found the next boss spawn location. <gasps> oh, we found it! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm a happy kid in a candy shop. Take me to the candy shop. It was literally just over the mountaintop. It, it wasn't even that bad. It was right there. Look at, look at it. <laughs> a couple more days went by as I stood there, setting up the portal. Now with my wolves, I started gathering all the items around in the pit, from resin to gray dwarf eyes and stone and some equipment. I did take a fair amount of resin to light some torches around the place. While back at home base now, I picked up a few dragon eggs that were definitely needed if I want to fight the next boss. Made all the arrows I could as well from those of needles and then took my leave. While standing before the fourth boss spawn, I used my hoe a bit just to level out a bit of land. Then I started laying the eggs inside their respective places as the boss started to spawn. I will say the hardest thing about this boss was trying to use melee on it as the terrain interfered way too much again. I could only get a single hit in if I was lucky. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not want to get hit by that. Okay, this is going to be a long fight then. I'm hitting something, but like, oh, this boss is so gross. I'm literally stuck on the boss. I'm stuck. The HP on this one dwindled down slowly, piece by piece, tick by tick. It honestly felt like this was never going to end, and I could feel the difficulty with this boss now. At this point, I was just glad it didn't spawn two of them or anything higher than a one star. The last little part of this is where I panicked the most. A wolf ran up to me while I was tunneled on the boss and bit me. And they hit hard. My HP dropped and there I was, dead. Dying both in-game and inside. Oh, come on. Why is there a level two now? Yeah, we both know you don't like me, okay? I'm trying my best here. Oh crap, oh crap. The quickest viking in the west was me, and when I was back, I had to move the portal up and above to the mountaintop. Day 258, I was killing off a few elders, collecting materials to make more runestones for better enchantments on gear, and also looking to up my soul intake because I was missing out on extra HP. Fighting off one of the one star elders, I was actually using my class skill to gain some more souls every few seconds, because the damage was strong enough it was AoE, and I killed off a bunch of the elder roots that were spawning. While fighting the boss though, a 4 star Grado thought it'd be cool to say hi and join the fight. It didn't end so well for the big blue guy, but 
there he was. It came to a point here where I was actually being so close to dying again that I just took off into the forest, healing and trying to gather my strength. While I was healing up, a troll started to go on a rampage, trying to kill me dead. Soon after, I made my way back to the Elder and finished it off as much as I could. A total of 150 plus souls. Day 259, I killed a few more off, gathering the loot they dropped and returning home. I started breaking down most of the items, including the trophy and keys for the better magical resources they provided as well. I still needed more souls than I had, so the next summon of Elder, I started farming more roots. It came to a point where I had about 200 souls now, and just a sliver of HP left on the boss. Look at you, buddy. I'm gonna do a little bit of this and steal- wait, 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 wait. Wait until you do that for me. Okay, cool. And then we'll take your thing and then I'm gonna. Ooh, I got a legendary. Oh, was that a harpoon? Harpoon. Yes, it was. Look at that. My souls are at 211. My HP is almost at 400. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Alright, I'm gonna go back home and turn this stuff in. With the defeat of this boss, I got lucky enough to find a legendary drop, gathered everything around I could, and ran back to home base, storing and sorting out any items in my inventory. On day 260, I started doing a few Ikthir bosses, seeing if it would help me with more runestones. It honestly wasn't great. Even though I could defeat them much faster than the elders, I was looking for something more. Back in the elder boss spawn now, summoning the boss itself, and going around killing off more roots for souls. By now, I got up to a whopping 280 souls. But here's the thing, this next elder spawn, it was a tough son of a gun. A four star elder boss spawned out of the blue. It hit harder than I'd ever thought possible, though I had a good thing going, down to almost no HP with the boss, and one too many stomps, it actually got me good. I died like an ant being squashed by a car. Like it was just a squish, squish squash, that was it. <laughs> I died. Another thing to point out too is when you die with this class on, the souls you have actually go down by a good amount. Lucky for me though, while getting my stuff back, the boss was actually stuck between two trees and that helped me out a lot. I finished it off quickly, able to fend off just one more elder boss and made my way home. I more or less fought this last boss for the souls I lost fighting the four star. Spending the next few days, I took to the mountains because I wasn't done with the force boss. It was still flying around too, HP full and looking for more prey. Running down to the mountainside, I picked up any leftover things from my other grave and started the battle once more. By this point, my HP was pretty much doubled and I figured I would try using melee to DPS it. I did have to run back and forth every time the boss would summon some drakes to fight me, but they were the easiest part. Bringing its HP down, I finally got it to less than half. I had another skill on my class that actually allowed me to steal the damage of the opposing monster and give it to me as a buff. And in the process debuffing the DPS on said monster, oh, I was chunking it. I was chunking that HP. And with a good pace and with a final hit, that was it. All right, we're getting so close to finally killing this boss. Man, it's taking me a while. Going back and forth. Okay, this should be it. I should kill it here. Oh my god, kill it here. Kill it, kill it, kill it. It's my last chance. Come on. <laughs> Got the mother. The mother of all. Oh, that's a lot of tears. Um, let's just, let's just do uh, Oh, new crafting recipe. Okay. The trophy, everything, just the explosion, the boom, boom, boom. It's, look at it. It's so beautiful. I love it. With the items from the boss in hand, I made my way back up the mountain, actually finding a cave that was part of the newest update. I wanted to go through it, but needed time to recoup and collect my thoughts. Where did I put this portal? Oh, are you kidding me? I found a cave here too? Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. A new day was here and I finally built the artisan table. That gave me the windmill and the spinning wheel, which would open up so much more later on. Checking the artisan table, I found something curious here too. A consumable called carnivore bait? Not sure what that was used for or why it took 20 pieces of lox meat. No way that was happening anytime soon anyways. The next big thing I really needed though was some blast furnaces for new ores I could smelt down. I went into the swamps by this point looking for more cores and finding the fire monsters that dropped them. Had about 20 or so before heading back home, picking up an artisan table and making space at my craft ore spot. I wanted to have two furnaces still going and on top of that two blast furnaces beside that. 
With the chest set along and coal going, everything was cooking and looking wonderful. Day 265, I was out and about, putting up my trophy from earlier so that I could get the buff whenever needed. I also did more digging around in the forge, looking for the new recipes and trying to build myself a sage fire staff. I actually went for the fire one, seeing that there were like, you know, there was holy, there was electric, there was all these other types, and I was so happy using more magic in Valheim now. Sage lightning staff, ice staff, holy staff, fire staff, what? 50 fire damage, spirit? Hold on a sec. Did we just get magic? <laughs> Did we just get magic? Oh, that'd be so cool. We just got magic. So this is all the sage too. Obsidian, silver crown. So this is the crown. This is... Oh, I can craft legendary rune stones now from the dragon tears. And because we get so many, we can craft a bunch of them to finally do that. And now we can just fight. Oh, God, yes. We can finally fight that boss. I did attempt to test out its DPS on the elder, and it really wasn't that bad. The burn damage alone was enough to keep me happy, and that and the level of my magic would grow in levels. A few more days had gone by, and now my magic level was much higher. I spent quite a bit of time using that sage staff killing off more elders. I also wanted to max out my souls and get that 300 plus HP. Life was good as a viking right now. I don't know why I did that. I was, uh, <laughs> Day 271 and 272, I started it off by enchanting my staff to a legendary. Four rolls on it and the only one that mattered. Plus 20% elemental damage, which meant more pew pews. The real test came when I went back to the planes because let's be honest, planes is terrifying enough but with mods, it's it's hell. You know, it's just, it's downstairs. It ain't upstairs, it's downstairs. Would you know it? I was lucky and found another three star locks. Shooting fireballs at it and watching it burn, the monster started running towards me. I can officially say even with 400 plus HP, it still hit like five trucks. Okay, yep, you hurt a lot. Okay, he does just under 400 damage. I mean, hey, that's good to know though, right? 400 damage? Ooh. Something I didn't expect to happen though, while I was being chased, a new wolf out of nowhere called the Forest Wolf ran by and killed me. Literally, a drive-by chomp. It hit just as hard as the snow wolves, if not harder. Whoa, whoa, why is there a wolf here? There's a, a forest wolf from where? Hello, excuse me? As you could tell by now, I ran back and picked up my stuff. Using my new staff and with enough fireballs, I got it low enough to where me and some gross could kill it. But wait, there's more! The same growth that helped me kill the lock shot its poison tar mix that hit dot damage was way too much for me to handle and I died on spot. I melted. Day 273 and while I was at home base, I got me a new rested buff, put on my imaginary sneaky beaky pants and made my way into the plains. I needed to go get my stuff without dying and this was the worst place to try and attempt that. But I also had no other choice. Looking around with no one in sight, I picked up my stuff and put my armor back on. I wanted another go around with those gross and went looking for them. When I wasn't worrying about a 3 star locks trying to kill me, the gross by themselves were the easiest things to kill. I also put on a new cape I picked up and made my way back home. On day 274, I was still curious how much damage my staff could really do. So there I was headed into the mountains. I also managed to fight a few drakes with some pretty high stars. The damage of fire over time to the ice monsters worked pretty nicely. That and every time I used the staffs, the fireball almost staggered them too. Making my way to the cookery to then store the food I acquired and cook up a new mead to test it out. The mead was called Freya's Concoction and I honestly wasn't sure what it did. If I'm being completely honest, even now, I'm still not sure what it did to me or for me. Bye, Frost. Look at that. That's so cool. 200 gray dwarf eyes, dragon egg, and needle. I don't even know what it does, but it, <laughs> I want one. <laughs> All these are so good. The next few days I spent healing up my wolves, spent some time storing extra items in my inventory away at home base, and picked up some tar pieces. Standing in my portal hub now, it was time I gave this place a roof or at the very least something to start protecting me from the weather. With my hammer in hand, I went along the stone parts and started placing shingle roofing, skipping the open space to place three next to each other. I started a few more rows along one another and built more shingles as needed. Unfortunately, I didn't have as much tar as I liked but that would come eventually. That and I was terrified to farm more tar pits in the plains. After finishing up that, two gray dwarfs thought to surprise me and I was happily pleased. 
a big five star and a wee little one star. Taking a trip back to my cookery, I checked up on the meat and Freya's concoction was done. I also placed two advanced totems down out by the sea totems we had going from before. They seemed cool enough. Something I realized from before was when I defeated the fourth boss, there were more recipes than I thought. The thing was, I needed flax, which was only found in the plains. Yup, you heard right, the plains. So, while back in the biome, I met with some death mosquitoes. Goodbye, good luck, have fun, living water. Can you catch me? Can you catch me? Can you catch me? Oh my god, he could almost catch me. Okay. <laughs> found out using the staff on them wasn't the plan because it definitely didn't one-shot them. And any attack from them to me was deadly. Ow! Oh, I didn't know there was a second one. Ooh, that was close. That was real close. Real, real close. Wait, what? why are you guys attacking the living water? While sitting on just 50 HP, I was panically throwing fireballs. I don't even know if that's how you say that. <laughs> Hoping it would hit and missing every one of them. Luckily, with just a second to spare, I got a good two hits in where the fire damage took over and killed it. Phew! Die, 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 die. Please die, please die, please die. Got him. Though making my way through the fields, I wasn't so lucky this time around. The staff just didn't do it, and as the mosquito got its hit in, I died. I needed a new mindset and a new rested buff, so waking up to a new day I had both of them. Using my special Ike there power, I traveled quietly, hoping I was under the radar from any more death mosquitoes. While picking up my stuff individually from the grave, a growth spawned and started spewing its bile at me. Poisonous, tar-like substance that had my HP just melt to nothing. I died again. So this time around, I picked up and sorted through my stuff, ran and recovered another grave, and decided it was time to take some anger out on feelings. This three-star feeling wouldn't leave me alone though. Big beefy boy or girl it was. With all the recent deaths, my souls were really starting to take a hit and I could feel it at its core. So the next day, I went back out to the elder spawn, summoning the boss and using my skill again to farm all the roots for easy souls. By the end of it all, I was rocking a good 220 souls and counting. Hello, five star. How are you? How are you doing? Hmm? You're a big one, aren't you? Look at you. Big deer. Holy crap. What is happening over there? Hold on. Yeah. Goodbye. I will remember you. No, not really. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. A few days had gone by and I was looking to upgrade my food. There was real potential. I just needed to farm a bit to get the ball going. I started running around the black forest in hopes for blueberries. Now I know this might not be so cool to you, but while running through the woods, I came across what I thought was so cool a fully generated two trees crossed by one another. It was the most just absurd thing to find randomly, naturally there generated. I don't know, I liked it. <laughs> I crossed a bit of water and found an elven ranger who didn't like me. Oh, no, 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 go away, go away. Hello, shoot me? Okay, cool. Jeez, this guy I think he's doing huh? I also came across the weirdest looking cave entrance that truly scared me. Hello. Oh, that, why did that just scare me so much? What is this? Hello? What, 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 what? Okay, oh, it's just a troll. Okay, we're fine. Everything's fine. Everything's kind of, maybe, are we fine? We're fine. Okay, is that troll coming after me though? Say, oh, <laughs> hey, what's up? What's going on? All right, let's steal you. It said to enter. Do I enter this? What is it? Uh, uh, I don't want to enter. I wasn't sure if I should go in it, so I just marked it on the map. Please let me know if you do want me to go in it or not, because in the last cave-like thing I found, when I went through it, I did something special because it was so special, and I phased out of the map. I literally kept falling like you would when you hit a bedrock, like, that's what happened in Valheim. But I, I'll definitely try it again. Let me know. <laughs> I arrived back in my cookery and woke up to a start of a new day. I was ready. So was my food. The reason for all that farming for the food was this. I was able to craft a new cooking recipe called ice cream, which was far superior than sausages or turnip stew. Okay, so we've got a lot of stuff we can play off of now. The blueberries, electric, I, I think it was ice cream we wanted. Because ice cream helps with the frost, I'm assuming. 
Honey sausages aren't terrible. They're not bad. Obviously, it could be better. Let's see. Spice lot. Oh my god, that is delicious and amazing. Honey, that's it. Barley, crystal. We almost have a thousand honey. What the fudge? Yo, I totally can craft this. Carrots, turnips, entrails. Beautiful. This is even better. So we got 10 and 10 of the best things we can have at the moment. That and I made something called haggis. Sounded off, but man, did it do the job. 55 HP and 55 stamina. Not too shabby. Just before heading out on an adventure, I was standing near my bonfire and noticed something out in the distance. A one-star troll that was looking at my portal hub like a snack. I was not about that. Okay, okay, okay. There's, there's a troll. There's a troll by my thing. We gotta kill it. We gotta kill him fast. Oh, this is easy. It's just a one-star too. Let's go. What the fuck? Boop. All right. Rip it. Hey, it's a party. I spotted a frog. <laughs> that was a bad joke. That was such a bad joke. <laughs> that was a really bad joke. All right. We're having a party here. You want to fight? Boop. No, 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 no. Get out of my way. Who's going to win? Is it the ghosty boy or is it the trolly boy? Go, troll, go. Go, troll, go. Oh, you're not. You're not hitting him, are you, ghosty boy? Are you? I can't tell. What do you want? You want a piece of me? All right. Now you're dead. Now you're dead. Where did that troll even come from? It's like it chased something out here. Quickly finishing it up, I made my way back to the plains, strolling through somehow undetected and looking for a vantage point. I did find this nice big rock just sitting there, looking out and taking aim. I needed that flax I spoke of a while back and this was the perfect time for that. I started pulling fueling by fueling out so I could lessen the load. I didn't want an army of these guys bombarding me. Killing off as many as I could, I pulled a big boy fueling berserker and this was absolutely terrifying. Hey big boy, you wanna fight? You wanna go? The slow on my mace kept messing up the timing of my parry, so the monster got a few good hits in. <laughs> like, ouch. Now, instead of stroking my ego too much, I just turned tail and jumped back on that rock safely. I'm officially calling the rock Patrick Star, by the way. Finally killing the feeling off, I started crouching and sneaking into their base. I was in denial that no one could see me, because no one could. I started looting the flax, fortunately, a few new recipes in hand and getting the heck out of there. You don't see me. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, 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 okay. Crap, crap, crap. Run, run, run for the hill. Run, run. <laughs> go, go, go. No way was I about to die with the one thing I very much needed. Living water. Easy peasy. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm so gonna die. Well... Everything can kill me right now, and I don't want it. I don't need it. Before heading to bed, I put all the flax I could into the spinning wheels and called it a night. Finally waking up to day 289, and man, was I a super happy camper. Fully fledged to sage, here I come. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Ooh, hello. What? Huh? What? Sage rope? Sage to What? Huh? Ho hold the phone. Hold the phone. No, no, no. Sage rope? What? Hood? There's a hood. Sage book. There's a book. Okay. Uh, oh, what? nomadic. There's a. Oh. Oh, oh, I, I pressed the wrong button. I, I've, I've punched my table. I'm panicking. Okay. Nomadic boots and that. 26 base. Resistance versus frost. This would help so much. Plus 25 run. I mean, I don't really. Personally, I don't like two-handed things. I've just found them. Not great if you don't have the tank ability. I knew exactly what I needed to do. Get started on some flax and ores to start crafting all the new shiny things. The first thing I would need though, and really surprised I didn't have any of, was iron. It was the main ingredient and I had zip. Back into the swamps I went, first finding some big star monsters in my way. Did I mention they hit hard too? Because they, they did. By the end of it all, the swamps I was in was already cleared out. Though I did have another I could try by my bone mass portal. So while searching around the bone mass area, I managed to pick up a bit of coal and cores along my travels. I did come across an unexplored swamp crypt and once inside I started mining like no tomorrow. By the end of it all, I had nearly 50 pieces and that was more than I planned on. Started the smelting process almost immediately once I got back to my craft ore spot. Day 290 was like Christmas morning, running to the smelters to find that iron, then back to my spinning wheel for the yarn. Just look at it. 
at all the beautiful list of stuff. The sage stuff. <laughs> Happy times. So between the sage stuff, I was also interested in a porcupine. Porcupine, let's go, let's go. Look at this thing. Porcupine is a go. Blunt, pierce, 50, 45 pierce. An upgrade to my iron mace that made it look like a small fry. I was curious and tested out my new found weapon, running over to the black forest and spawning an elder or two. I was actually beating them down quite nicely. The four star obviously took me more time, but very doable and better than I thought it would be. Christmas continued through the next day where I was standing at my forge, looking through the robes again. I picked up the red one and crafted it on command. The look could not be better, and man oh man was I a novice sage now. Magic was going to become the better parts of the next mileage in this playthrough. One thing I also noticed is that my storage for the weapons and such was taken up by previous armors I wore up until now and needed to change that. So I started building some armor stands and placing them down one by one. First was the battered set, next would be the Groot set, then the wolf set, and lastly the padded set. The padded set was one of my favorites, but in an update for a mod, the set was gone. So I just stopped wearing the armor and kept it for safekeeping. Day 292, I felt ready, ready to tackle the planes and see how far I could get. Arriving, I started with the food, popping the ice cream, haggis, and moochie. Okay, this is gonna be interesting to say the least. Uh, I just, I pray I don't die. So let's take all of our food first. Holy crap, look at that. Look at the HPs go. Started with some Desquitos and feelings in the distance. Seems like as good spot as any. A forest wolf was around, and better safe than sorry, I made sure to use my porcupine and shield for this one. Easily defeated by my new weapon. So something I didn't realize while I was going deeper into the plains was how much of a pansy I was. A four star death Skeeto easily able to one shot me if I didn't have my shield out. Yeah, that taught me a valuable lesson in what not to do and how fast I could really run. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Dude, it's the four star again. I gotta run. Oh, that four star death Skeeto is gonna be the death of me literally. I was out in a matter of seconds, using other bodies around me as a meat shield. Sorry, not sorry? Another forest wolf came to greet me and I showed him the door out with my blunt object called the porcupine. Now with my HP back to full, I thought I'd try my hand again and go deeper into the parts of the plains. While killing off the lesser of monsters around, I noticed a new spawn in the tar pits, something called a voidling. What is a voidling? Okay, there's a voidling behind you, buddy. I don't know what it is, but be careful. Freaking me out, dude. Oh, what the hell? Oh, okay, okay. They do some weird, like, magic uh, sh stuff, poison damage. I don't like this. I do not like this. I got a trophy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy there, buddy. Please let me know if this is vanilla base or I'm actually seeing something mod related because I was a bit spooked. One that chased me, I got the last blow in, picking up its trophy and taking that new addition home. Dropped some stuff off and gained another rested buff before making my way back into the plains. In all, I was okay as I traversed the lands once more, fighting a few more voidlings off, looking for any new loot for different recipes. I was eventually atop my rock again, Patrick Star. My big brain tried to throw just a single firebolt off, thinking I could pull one and apparently pulled all of Valhalla after me. Oh, that's a lot of- Oh my god! When you call one, but you accidentally call 50 shale, holy smokes. I jumped off the rock and darted through the village, stealing and looting any leftover flax and feeling totems for later. Okay, if you guys are all here, what if I just run then? What if I just do that? What if I just like run- Oh, okay, 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 okay. On day 293, I quickly went back to the plains, now using the flax I had to actually start a farm because this was a better idea long term than trying to use the nine I had for nothing really. Staying in my safe spot, I then planted the rest. Once I finished up with that, I traveled ways back to the mountains. Here I was hoping to find more dragon eggs because I was looking to fight the fourth boss once more. While running through, I did get lucky with two eggs, spotted a drake fighting a fueling somehow on the mountains and just left them alone. Made my way back down the hill and then to my cookery. More tears here I come. The next day I took some time to actually tend to my carrots and turnips. Carrot seeds at this point were a great currency that I needed a lot of for the best of best foods. 
The next few days I traveled around, getting some more silver over on the mountains to upgrade my armor for better protection. Though things hit so hard I died with just two hits. I went back and forth to the plains checking on my flax farm every so often. I even managed to get enough dragon eggs to spawn another boss. While going back through what seemed like flurries, I fell right on top of a snow cave. Oh, there's a cave. Maybe we could do this first? Uh, let's wait, let's wait. Let's just give it a second, you know, let's wait it out. I don't know where the boss spawner thing is. I know my portal, oh, it's right over here, okay. That would come later, as I really wanted to beat another boss here. Once the snow cleared up, I spawned the dragon, using my sage staff to really see if all the praise was worth it. Yes, <laughs> yes it was. Because the staff only used stamina and not magic, things felt a lot easier than trying to melee or even a bow at this point. Day 298 was a bit more trickier. That, and I did not expect this to happen. Summoning the boss for the last time, I got the twins prefix, which means it spawned two bosses of the same. It was, it was scary. My FPS dropped hard and I could feel the change in temperature. What was that noise? You hear that? It was like a snake or something. Where's this boss? Oh, it's up there. Oh, come on. There's two of them now. That's kind of funny. Look at this. We got two modders in the house. You ever see two, two mothers of a boss? Oh God. Oh God. It's actually super laggy. I do not like this. What the heck? Oh, but they're so much weaker. Okay. Oh, the lag is real. Let's just kill them, please. So wait, if there's two of them, do I get double the drops? All right, I'm just gotta watch where they're going. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, okay. Now, wait, if I'm hitting one, the other one takes damage too, I think, right? Oh crap, this is awkward. You guys, um, actually, you know what? Kill it, kill it, kill it with fire. Oh, oh, come on. Yes, we did it. Woo. Oh, thank the heavens we did that. Okay. That last hit was so satisfying and rewarding. Times were good. Oh. On day 299, this was different because I meant to play through this part on Vanilla Valheim first to get the full feel of it. But I kind of just said F that. First thing I see upon entering the cave was bats. But not just any bats. One to five star bats eating at my HP. And these suckers were agile and hard to hit too. Kinda annoying. <laughs> There's a five star bat hitting me. How fun. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come here, five star bat. C come here. Stop biting me. Literally, a bat's gonna kill me? No. I went on to picking up crystals while making my way down the cave, coming across new items like fenring hair and these scribed messages on the walls. Just leave me alone. I'm trying to look at this. There's a big wolf. They're praying to the wolves and then something. I, I don't really know what that is. It honestly looked like some wolf cult type deal, but in a good way. Loving the new update so far, I proceeded deeper into the caves, watching my step and finding these big dungeon like doors. This specific one I found had some sort of big bad wolf cultist stuck in some cavern type hall. I also found a few Ulov type werewolves. Man oh man was I on my toes here. Uh, hello. Oh, who are you, cultist? I'm a cultist too. Let's fight. Stay right there. Yeah, look at that. Got him. Got some fa- ah, ooh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Calm down, buddy. Calm down. Calm down, wolfie. Thank you. Oh, good boy. All right. This place is creepy though. They got like claw marks, scratch marks. Seeing as I collected everything and was still alive, no time like the present to just leave this place. Outside, I took my portal back home, swiftly running to the plains to replant my flax into more and then keep that train going. Finally back in my bed and for what would be the last night I'd sleep during these 300 days or well, 100 days I spent here. Day 300 was here, and I felt like this one took much longer than expected. I can honestly say though, the amount of fun I still find myself having is incredible because I figured I'd be burned out as well. That said, it's not a need, it's a must now. That and I must thank you all for the support you show me day to day, leaving wonderful comments, advice on ways to do things more efficiently, or just curious about how I did certain things. 
I really am so grateful for your consistent support with the series of videos. That and I'm so thankful to be able to interact and be able to meet so many people fans of the game. It's it's a great game. It's a fantastic game that offers so much and has one of the best and most interactive and fun communities I've been a part of in a long time. I love you and all your faces. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. This is Rare Pandas signing out. Bye guys. <laughs>